Hey everybody, it's Julie for EllenHudson.com. Welcome to Hello Monday. Today I've got the Essentials by Ellen Coffee Cozy Kit. This is a really adorable bear-themed felt cozy kit, and it comes in this awesome storage pouch. It's got the little um, Essentials by Ellen tag or label there, and once we open it up, I'm just going to take all the contents out so, to show you what comes in the kit. I just love that it comes in its own storage bag. That's so handy. Now this is a longer format die. It is a one piece die, so it's gonna go, it's gonna wrap around your cup completely um, in one piece. So you're gonna need an extended platform uh, or the Platinum XL in order to cut it in one pass. And it's got all the other uh, little embellishments, including some stitching holes. I actually prefer mine without the stitching holes, but they're there if you need to have that guideline when you're stitching the ends together. Of course, we've got the muzzle and a bow tie and a heart, the eyes and the little ear inserts. And here's the range of felt. Because it's a bear theme, we've got some really fun themed felt colors here and embroidery floss that all coordinates together with it. I love this heather gray. So I've made a couple of these felt cozies because I love doing the uh, stitching on these things by hand. So I'm going to fold a sheet in half and just show you by placing the dies how you could get two of every die shape out of one piece of felt. And then there's the uh, stitching holes if you need to add those on the end. And I'm actually gonna cut two pieces of felt from the body that wraps around my coffee cup because I like to double layer my felt for my coffee cozies. So here you can see I've got all uh, the pieces cut out and I'm just gonna use some white glue. Um, Crafter's Pick is probably a really good one in the shop for gluing these on. I just grabbed what I had handy and it's a nice white glue. I don't know what do they call those, PVC glues or whatever. But anyway, um, is it PVA? PVC? PVA? I, I don't know. It's just white glue. So I'm just going to use that and if I get any excess around there, I'll just dab that up with um, a clean paper towel. And so once that's dry, I'm ready to sew my two layers of felt together. And I like to put the little eyes and the nose and all that stuff on separately in case I want to do any decorative embroidery stitching around those pieces and do actual, you know, applique work. That way all the stitch work is hidden in between the two layers of felt. So I don't like to stitch through um, both layers when I'm doing the decorative stitching. So now I'm using some pins to hold my pieces together because because for some reason when I start sewing, my things kind of slide and drift apart and I want to make sure that these stay anchored while I'm doing my stitching. And I'm just gonna show you here on a sample piece of felt. <laughs> I grabbed a needle and there's my needle. It's got a nice big eye for accommodating that skein of embroidery floss because I don't like to separate mine. I like to use the full Monty. So now I've just tied a knot there in the end and I'm gonna go ahead and thread that. I forgot that I put that on camera because <laughs> Like sometimes watching me thread a needle is like excruciating. <laughs> so now I've got my two layers of felt together. And remember, this is just to show you how um, to do uh, the blanket stitch because I love that stitch on my felt projects. So again, I'm just using a couple of pins to keep my layers from shifting around while I'm doing my stitching. Now, when I stitch two layers of felt together, I love to use a blanket stitch, and I'm not an expert in any of this embroidery stitching and needlework and all that kind of stuff, but I do love me a good blanket stitch. So I've got my knot, and I went through um, the second layer of felt in between the two layers so that I could hide the tail end of my knot in between, and that way nobody will ever see that. And then I'm going to come back up over the top and come back through that exact same hole. And this is gonna be like my anchor stitch that starts the whole thing. So I just wanted to show you how I'm coming back up through that hole on the back side there. I'm gonna pull that and just before it gets completely tight, there's gonna be a loop of thread there, right there. And I'm gonna thread my needle through that from right to left. And then I will go ahead and pull it taut. And there we go, I've got my first stitch, first knot. And you want these stitches to be perpendicular at a, at a, I think it's a 45 degree angle 
to the edge of the felt. That's how it looks the nicest. You don't want it like slanty. So you may need to adjust your stitches as you're going to make sure that they're nice and straight, but that's okay. You just, as you go, that's what you do. Now I spaced it out. Um, I don't know how far apart they are. I just kind of eyeballed it and I went down through the front layer out the back. And there you can see as I'm pulling it tight, just before I cinch it taut, that little loop of thread remains and I'm gonna come through it from right to left and then I will tighten the thread and I will just keep repeating this same process. And this is gonna give a really nice uh, finished edge to the two layers of felt. Now, of course, if you have a sewing machine, you can you know sew these together. You can just glue them together if you want, but I really love the look of the blanket stitch along the edges of my felt projects. Seriously, love it. And it's very therapeutic to do this. So I'm just gonna continue um, doing the same stitch. And the reason why I'm doing it a couple times is I wanted you to see the process because sometimes when you're watching it, you don't, it doesn't always register, you know, which direction that needle is going. And you can do a blanket stitch from the back side or the front side. And I find that I get much more consistent stitching and it's easier for me to eyeball that I'm getting it consistent when I'm piercing through the felt from the front side instead of the back side. But if you want, you can put a piece of like masking tape or washi tape along that edge there to give you an equal or, or a guideline, you know, from that edge there to make sure that you're spacing your stitches far enough in from the edge of the felt. But I just find from this side, I can see what I'm doing. When I'm poking through on the back side, I'm poking my finger. I'm making multiple stabs through the felt from the back side to try to get the right spacing. So this works better for me. <laughs> and I'm coming up on a corner here. So once you get to the corner, you're going to have to... Um, change your stitch just a little bit. Now here I'm at the edge there and I'm actually going to come right through that exact same hole that I already stitched. And when I do that, I can come up through that loop. There's my loop. I'm going to keep on doing that same loop thing, but I don't want to pull it so tight that I actually crush the corner. I don't want it so loose that it's just like flopping all over the place. But here you can see I'm making some adjustments and making sure that that stitch is on the diagonal to that corner. And then to finish that corner off, I'm gonna come around and I, once again, I will go back down with my needle. I took that other um, pin that I had there to hold it together, I got that out of my way. And I'm gonna come back through that same hole one more time. There I'm pulling it and then just before I get it too tight, I'm gonna once again go from right to left through that loop. This is creating a really nice edging along the felt and there you go, there's the corner. So you see, I didn't pull it so tight that it just like totally mangled the corner. So you just want it taut enough to keep its shape and look nice and finished and not be floppy loose and not be so tight, it's all scrunched and crushed. And then I'm gonna repeat my 45 degree angle stitching here and just keep going. So this is such a therapeutic stitch and I think it gives a really nice finish to felt projects. Now you could use a running stitch if you wanted to. Um, I just really like this look. So that's why <laughs> I've made so many coffee cozies. <laughs> <laughs> I've made three so far since I got my hands on this kit because I just really find it soothing and relaxing to do this hand stitching. And it just reminds me of when I was a kid and used to do, I used to make dish towels and things like that. So I'm going to speed this up so that you don't uh, put a fork in your eye <laughs> from watching me. And I did it this way because it was kind of hard with the black thread and the gray felt to to really see um, what I was doing all that well. So I thought it was better to show you on this sample piece of felt than to, to show you on my bear. Plus it would take a really long time um, on video to show you <laughs> me stitching the edges of my felt cozy. So anyway, I'm just kind of getting in my groove here and boy, it was hard to slow down for the camera because once you get your groove on and your flow, you don't realize how hard it is for someone else who's watching to see exactly what it is you're doing. So I felt kind of clumsy when I slowed it down. But man, once I got going, I was just like whipping through this blanket stitch. So anyway, um, I'm getting close to the end here and to finish it off, I don't know about you, but I like to hide my knots and the end. So this is my last stitch. And at the last stitch, 
on this example here, I'm going to go right back down through the last um, stitch that I made through that same hole, and then I'm going to come up, not through the whole thing, I'm going to come up in between the two layers of felt where that last stitch is finishing, finishing off. And then I'm going to pull that up through the two layers of felt, and then I'm going to use that loop to slip the thread through it again to create a finishing knot. So I'm just going to go through that and then I'm going to use my fingertips there to just tighten that up so it's nice and tight. There I just wanted you to see where that knot is. And then I'm actually going to send my needle back down through the two layers of felt. So here we go. Come on. <laughs> I'm like, mmm, so clumsy. All right, there's my knot. Now I'm going to go through those two layers of felt. So I'm just coming right back down where I came up with that knot in between the two. Now the thing you want to be careful about is that you're not poking through the front layer of felt or the back layer of felt. So I'm kind of wiggling my needle a little bit back and forth to make sure that I'm my needle is still in between those two layers. And you can see I'm not poking through the back and I'm not poking yet through the front. And then once I pick a spot, I'm going to come up through the front layer of felt so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to pull that. I'm actually going to scrunch this felt up just a little bit, just pinch it and scrunch it a little bit, just to give me enough tension that I can go in and trim that, clip it off. And then when I release that crumpling of the felt, it's going to pull that thread back inside the two layers and it's hidden inside. So nobody will ever see that knot or the finishing tail. It gives a really nice finishing touch to the stitching. And here you can see the finished project and I did some uh, tacking stitches there. I wrapped it around my cup and used some pins to hold it in place and then I just put a couple of stitches there to tack it. But you could use all different kinds of closures, whatever floats your boat. And these are so fun to make. I think you're going to get addicted. All right. I hope you enjoyed and check out the Felt Coffee Cozy Kit. It's so much fun. Thanks for watching.